Hello, my name's Gavin, and this is Genre Books. It's Tuesday, it's Tag Tuesday, and today's tag is the winning titles tag from Heather Reads. I was tagged by Book Chat with Pat, and I had to think about this because the premise of this tag is, have you ever bought a book because of its title, and then gives a series of prompts for what kind of title? And my initial reaction was, no, I don't buy books for their titles. And then I think I found some examples where I might have. I mean, normally I'm buying because of the author. I'm buying because of a recommendation. Sometimes, although you shouldn't, I'm buying because of the cover. But the title? It's an interesting one. Prompt number one. Have you ever bought a book because it had a funny title? Yes. The book was Don't Mr. Disraeli by Carol Brahms and S.J. Simon. And it is a satire of Victorian literature. So I'm hoping to get to this in Victober. There is a sequel to this book, which I also managed to get, called No Bed for Bacon, which is a satire on Elizabethan literature, which I'm hoping to get to during Shake Timber. Prompt number two, have you ever bought a book because it had a shocking title? I think probably the closest I can get to that is a title that was shockingly audacious. And it worked. I bought the book and I really enjoyed it. And it was a heartbreaking work of staggering genius by David Eggers. This book is semi-autobiographical, maybe a bit more than semi-autobiographical. Um, very moving in parts. And I don't know why I haven't read any more David Eggers. I, I ought to. Um, I should get hold of some of his fiction. Have you ever bought a book because its title sounded like a line of poetry? Again, I've not bought a book because because of that I have bought books which are lines of poetry and there are numerous examples of such works but I'm going to choose a double whammy with Ian M. Banks and consider Flavus and Look to Windward two titles in his uh, culture science fiction series I've never read a culture book I didn't love they're definitely ones that are on uh, 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 I don't reread but I have a reread list and they're definitely on it Consider Flavus is the first and is sometimes thought to be sort of the weak link in the culture series I do disagree both of those titles are from the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Now this is this is a m massive version of The Wasteland. This is this is this is my wife's. This is not mine. This is a facsimile and transcript of all the original drafts, including the annotations of Ezra Pound. And it, if you like The Wasteland, which I do, this has absolutely everything you could possibly want to know. But what's pertinent? for this prompt is a line from section four of the wasteland flabus the phoenician a fortnight dead forgot the cry of gulls and the deep sea swell and profit and loss a current under the sea picked his bones in whispers and he rose and fell he passed the stages of his age and youth entering the whirlpool gentile or jew o oh you who turned the wheel and looked to windward consider flabus who was once as handsome and tall as you. Ah, it's been ages since I've read Wasteland. I think if there ever comes a time I want to kill off my YouTube channel, I will do a 10-part explanatory series 
examining the wasteland and go out the way I want to. Prompt number four. Have you ever bought a book because it had a title which made you ask a question? I've got a very specific book in mind. This book has a long title, so I've written it down so you have to bear with me. It's by uh, Anton Englert and it is called Large Cargo Ships in Danish Waters, 1000 to 1250 AD, Evidence of Specialised Merchant Seafaring Prior to the Hanseatic Period. And the question this made me ask was, am I getting too deep into a particular subject? But I really enjoyed, in a very specific and specialised way, um, reading this book. There were sections I had to skip because there were a lot of specialised archaeological um, pieces of information and I really was only interested in the historical context of this rather than the mechanics of digging. But what can I say? Some people like true crime podcasts. I like medieval trading organisations. Prompt number five. Have you ever read a book because it had a heartwarming or a homely title? Again, no, I don't think I've ever bought a book because of that. I do have books which sound like they'd have heartwarming or homely titles. And the one I'm going to choose does sound like it, but it's it's not a heartwarming book. And it's Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Blythedale Romance. I had to read this book as part of my university course and I was probably put off by the title but required reading is required reading and I'm glad I was required to read it. It's not a romance. There is human relationship stuff covered, obviously, but it is also telling the story of these utopian communities that sprang up in the early United States history. Um, I think in this case it's from memory based on um, communities started by Charles Fourier. So very idealistic people whose ideals butt up against reality and what ensues. I seem to be mentioning Hawthorne on this channel quite a lot recently so maybe that's telling me something prompt number six have you ever bought a book because it had a title with an unusual combination of words i don't think i bought this because of the title because i was aware of the author but the electric kool-aid acid test from tom wolf is quite a title I don't think it's his most impressive work. I think his, the, the three big ones that I've read um, from him that I do love are The Right Stuff, Bonfire of the Vanities, and um, A Man in Full. But the, his collection of journalism, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, or New Journalism, um, as it was dubbed back then, and it's very interesting to see something that was written as sort of self-consciously modern and progressive from a historical standpoint. But you get that uh, a fair bit with, with Tom Wolfe, especially now with the passage of time. I mean, if you read the right stuff now, and um, maybe Rocket Summer would be a good time to have a look at that book. If you read the right stuff now, you are looking at the olden days when people used to travel to the moon. Which is an unusual combination of words in itself. Prompt number seven, have you ever bought a book because it has a fantastic or magical title? No, although I've bought a lot of fantasy books and I am slowly collecting a fantasy range from the Ballantine Adult Fantasy series, but I'll stick with the perils of recency bias and pick two books that I've read in the last year which reference magic in the titles. Um, the, from Larry Niven. One is written by Larry Niven, and it's called The Magic Goes Away. And this is 
the story of magic disappearing from the earth. So it is our world. It's set in the past. Magic has been a real thing, but it has been used up and there is not much of it left. And it's a story of a quest of some wizards and a barbarian helper as they try to, uh, they go on a quest to try to find um, an artifact where they can extract a large um, deposit of magic from. And the sequel to this is The Magic Goes Away. Now this has a, this is more a collection of short stories set in that same universe. And this deals with the aftermath of the magic has actually gone. Um, but the possibility, as the title suggests, that you know at some point it's going to come back. Prompt number eight. Have you ever bought a book because it had a title which is a contradiction or describes an impossibility? No, I haven't. But I have started a book this month which does describe an impossibility. And I'm reading it as part of Rocket Summer and I have had to stop reading it also because of Rocket Summer. The weekly prompts are chasing me like the humanities through the month of July. This was a 1940s book which I was still halfway through, or not quite halfway through, when the 1940s week ended and I had to start my 1950s works. So it's something I'm going to come back to uh, a little bit later this year. I'm enjoying it. It's a story of two scientists who recently left university, have set up business for themselves and have found a way to um, duplicate matter um, so that you know, no one can tell the difference between an original object and the copy. A third character has been introduced in the form of a um, young woman, which I think both the scientists are going to fall in love with. And I think this is probably where the story is going to go. Are they going to try to uh, du duplicate her and this love triangle becomes four-sided? I can't see that ending well. And I'm hoping I'm guessing right, I was I've been looking incredibly foolish posting this. Still, prompt number nine, tag others. I will do, they'll be below the line. Thank you to Heather Reads for creating the tag. Thank you to Pat for tagging me. And I'll see you again soon.